Hey, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. It doesn't really matter where you're watching, when you're going to watch this. You could be sitting on the toilet and watching this. We don't care. What we like to do is bring you content. Hey, that's what Feathers Elite Pigeon Auction does. We go the, dis the distances, the miles, and you know what? You can't be in the UK without some good morning fog, and this is what we have here today. Yes, yesterday was a great day. We were at Kevin's. That was super. So today I just drove a little farther. I drove about three hours farther. I had to meet someone. We're moving forward. Feathers Elite Pigeon Auction season number five. The man who does all the writing, the books, <laughs> Lee Fribbins. Lee, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. And what part of the UK are we in? Right, we're right in the southeast. We're still in the southeast corner. Southeast um, corner. Yeah, so we're just in Essex now. Essex, yes. Um, so we're, we're we're in an area about an hour about an hour north northeast of London. So right okay. on the coast. That's why we got the fog. We got the fog uh, this morning. Lee was swimming. He's got the pool out. He's got his lofts here, and uh, you know it was nice enough to 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 uh, what's going on here? Is this working good? Yeah, it's it's okay. Nice enough to see the lofts. Good morning, good morning. Everyone is saying good morning. Now, this is your young bird loft, your old bird loft, everything. This is everything, yeah. Okay, yeah. A very nice setup here. you got a beautiful garden. Shit, you, you, you groomed it all very nice. Just for you. <laughs> hey, let's go down and take a look at the loft before we talk about what you do in the pigeon sport, because I know you do quite a bit. Very, very nice setup. You can see the birds for miles here, can't you? Yeah, it's just starting to clear now, so um, th that's the direction the pigeons will actually come in race day. Okay. Um. And this loft here, how, how long have you had pigeons? Um, I started with pigeons, I was six years old, Max. My granddad actually brought me six, six pigeons for my sixth birthday. He used to race in Scotland right. um, back in the day. Um, so yeah, I've had, had pigeons ever since. And th this loft here, I see it lets light in from the front. Uh, you, you open the doors to, to get them in and they just clock down in there on the floor. Yeah, so this is, um, yes, it's all open door. Um, I, I find it, as I say, that's the, the best, quickest trapping system that, I, that I've found. Um, so this, this loft itself is nearly 20 years old, so it's, it's kept, kept really well over that time. Um, I have the Pantal for ventilation. Um, there's no other ventilation in the loft, apart from when, obviously, when the doors are open. So it only breathes uh, when the doors are open, and then a little bit through the roof. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And how do you find the, the airflow in here? Good. Absolutely perfect. Now um, I, I was we were, we came in here and took a look. The young birds, everything looks nice and healthy. It looks great. You darken these birds, I take it. Yes. And yeah, I, I do do the darkness system. Um, I start now when the clocks change. So so that starts the end of March. Yeah. And I carry it on until about the second week of June. Um, cause that works for our racing system for when the pigeons start in July. Now, I, I notice with this loft, uh, you've got the, the skylights here all throughout the front. Yeah. This must make it quite difficult to darken. Um, well, it, it did initially. Um, I used to actually have actual ply, ply um, drawers that I used to pull across the roof. Right. But the problem I found with that was I'd find the pigeons' health, um, and the, 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 there'd be a smell in the loft, Right. The, the actual humidity of the loft wasn't right, and I'd never get my young birds young birds right. So I actually devised a, a system to sort of overcome that. Um, it's a pretty good system. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it's uh, I haven't seen one like this. So you okay. want you want to show us? Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's have a look. Yes, guys, for this lead pigeon auctions right now, uh, please go and check out what we've got on our auction site. Anecdote of G pigeons. So now this is the loft again. You got the end of it. You got the you got the conveyor belts. You don't have a very big team of pigeons. No, I tend to have 24 youngsters, so two two rounds, um, 12 in each round. Very healthy. You just started to put them on the dark. Yeah, you? they just started going on the dark. Obviously, they've been been naturally molting um, this time of year in the UK. The, the pigeons will molt themselves quite well so and I, I see also so so you've got two rounds yeah the birds come you oh you can put them through together yeah, I mean I'll, I'll keep them separate until they're so they're all eating and, and up flying well okay. so I'll just let you into this side so th these are the younger ones these, these have only just, just come away and, in the last one and for people wondering how does that work uh, 
I've seen this is the second loft I've seen with the heaters and the humidity. It tells you what the humidity is? Yeah, so, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've obviously got the loft humidity. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen the fog in the outside. So, outside it would be 90, 95% humidity. Right. Um, but with, with the heating elements, um, I always like to keep the loft at the uh, constant humidity um, and temperature. And between 60 and 65 gives that perfect dry area, uh, dry air, um, okay. and as I say, the same with the temperature, anywhere between 12 and 16 is, is, is a perfect temperature. Okay, now I see here, could you darken, and, and, yep. and this, is the, this is the crazy part, so, so it's a whole wire ceiling. Yeah, so and, the whole ceiling's completely wire, I mean, as I say, I used to have the drawer, the, the ply drawers that used to come across, um, and that would completely change the atmosphere uh, okay. when the pigeons were dark. So now how do you darken them? So now what I've actually done is I've actually had um, the, the actual darkening system actually fitted right up in the ceiling. Okay. Um, so the actual, the only thing that's actually um, being covered is, is the light source. The rest of the, the, the conditions of the loft stay exactly the same. So twice a day yeah. um, on an automated system. Right. Um, the the ceiling will darken. So um, you guys are seeing this in the loft. She's darkening right up. <laughs> so yeah, so this literally darkens off all the light sources. Um, and obviously when the, the doors are closed as well and the lights are off, it's we get dark. that pitch yeah. blackness. Although we're not changing the actual atmosphere of the loft at all. No, you're leaving no. all the air to flow up there. Everything changes, it stays exactly the same. And that's an excellent, excellent system. And you see you've got the same the same blinds here on the windows. Same blinds, blinds over the windows, yep. And obviously on the... A little bit of an system. investment, but it keeps it, uh, it's easy to do. It's push button. One button on an automated system, and the pigeons keep that health. They 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 keep that natural health, which obviously they need, especially with problems like young bird sickness, um, and, and respiratory I, problems. I notice no landing boards. The birds just Look. come from the sky. They land on the ground and they go straight on the ground, straight in, straight and they're the obviously struck over the pad. Perfect. Simple, easy. Simple and easy. Works well. And as you see, guys. It's just a very simple system. You can almost see it going up there now, just through there. That's a great way because you can allow your loft to get light if you want. Yeah. Or not. Um, and even, um, as I say, when, um, even on you know really hot days, mm -hmm. um, you can just low, I can just lower um, and give a little bit of shade just uh, because obviously the, the the lofts actually face southeast, okay. so we actually get that that sun all day so just to just to cool it down a little bit I can even lower it halfway, you know, halfway or something you yeah do. just to, just to just to keep that keep that temperature the same it's a very very nice setup very clean and tidy that's Thank for you. sure yep guys if you have questions now's your time for Lee he is he is here with us yes we are going to talk about what else he does did you want to show us your old birds yeah of course yeah you might as well we're here pigeon yeah. guys like to watch what we call pigeon pornography so let's give them the pornography very good so um the second round's just just come away these are my um these will be my race race cocks for this year um as i say time wise um i found that the best thing for me is is to race nine cocks nine hens and, and 24 youngsters so um that's the that's that's what I have, as I say, I have one more pair of youngsters to come away in the week. Um, they've actually um, gone to a charity auction for, for Ukraine, those two. So that's why I've, I've kept them in there. Um, and yeah, so these, these will be racing the channel hopefully this year if we, um, if we, if we manage to, to get cross. And, and the base bloodlines of your pigeons for people that are wondering? Yeah, sure. Um, they're Leo Van Rin base pigeons, so they're... If, if you want to put percentages on, um, the Van Rim pigeons were about 50% of the, the old Janssen lines. Um, there's some Mulliman in them. I do get a little bit red in some of the, some of the, the wings um, from the old Mulliman chocolate. Um, so, and the Tournier, the old Tournier distance pigeons. So they're a family of pigeons that um, I find can, can race from 60, 70 miles um, right through to 500 miles. So... Yeah. And you just fly these standard, regular widowhood? 
Yeah, standard Woodard system. I mean, I've obviously, um, as I'll show you shortly, I've, I've written some books on, on my racing cock system, my racing hens and my young birds. So. Gabe asks, do you do, you do any one-loft races? Um, I have sent to Sun City before, um, but I, I, I don't have enough sort of pigeons to, to compete in those, and I like to race my own, own pigeons, really. Um, but yeah, I, I do attend lots of the one lofts. I do go and and see what's happening. And yeah, I've been I've been in some one lofts before. Well, these cocks they look very very nice. Again, you see the heaters are in here as well. Ventilation is good. The lighting is good. They're super healthy. The droppings look very small, nice and tight. The feathers look painted on. Uh, super healthy pigeons. Thank you. And then we got what now? Your hens. Yeah, and so again, as I say. Um, this is this is my hens hens loft. Um, again, trapping trusted, trapping systems exactly the same. Um, and these 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 hens will be racing in about six weeks. It's nice to see a great small setup. Ah, John, thank you for saying that. Yeah, I will say it's. A, <laughs> It's the, look, actually the loft is bigger yeah. than the amount of birds that's in it by uh, I'd say by five times. But uh, the health, the health is super healthy in these pigeons. You can see super quality. Feathers are painted tight. The droppings are tight. Obviously, there's no smell of pigeons. And, and you, you you drink the birds still here from the other. Yeah, I, I use corridor drinkers. Right. Um, again, for basketing and whatever, they get used to that. Um, right. And now. Any stock birds? No, no stock. No stock. Um, my pigeons, as I said, were, were stolen a couple of years ago. Right. Um, so, yeah. Um, it no was no stock. Disappointing. So, no, I've um, only kept the best best for racing, really. Um, I used to sell quite a lot of pigeons from, from stock pigeons and that. But, yeah, since that happened, it sort of knocked me back a bit. And, yeah, I just, just enjoy the racing side. So, I just keep a few pigeons just to just to race really right and i mean it, it's a nice loft it's nice it's clean you've made it super easy on yourself you only got to scrape the floor a little bit that's, push the that's buttons the and key. it's done that's the key is it's just i i just need that simple routine um that i can i can i can handle and and i enjoy it that that's that's the key you know i've i've been where i've had hundreds of pigeons and i just lost lost that enjoyment because it it, it you know it became it became um, too much work. Too much, too much effort. Too much, too much hard work. Well, very, very nice here. Now let's go on in and, and talk about what yeah, else of course. you do. Yeah. You're, you're busy. You're, yeah. you're busy. I mean, I can see you got your pigeons here, and you love pigeons. Yeah. You're doing lots of other interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, I, in the UK, I um I do a, a weekly newspaper. Okay. Um, we do ten thousand copies. It's called the Racing Pigeon. Um, it's been going nearly 150 years. Um, so. Um, it's an institution really in the, in the pigeon world um, in the UK, although we do, we do send lots of copies um, around, the, around the world as well. It's, it's available online as a okay. digital version, All right. um, as, as well as the weekly, okay. um, we do the pictorial that was always a quarterly newspaper, right. um, and that's now a, uh, it used to be a, a monthly paper, it's now a quarterly. Um, that actually goes to 54 countries. Again, um, that's available um, as, a, as a glossy magazine, which we'll show you. And it's also available um, online as a digital version. So they're the, they're the two things that, that keep me particularly So, so basically, busy. You're, you're on the computer all the time. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously we have guys that um, actually do the typesetting and, and set, set the magazines for us. So this is um, the... Now, I know this book from being a little kid. My dad used to have it since, I think it came monthly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this book, and we had hundreds of copies, and then one day my mom, she threw them all out. Okay, but, yeah. So you do this, you're yeah, part of the so, pictorial. Yeah, we're the pictorial. I'm the editor of, obviously, the, the pictorial. Um, and, yeah, I mean, from a child, I mean, I remember running home from school on a Friday, to, to get my weekly newspapers and obviously once a month to, ha to have the, the, the glossy paper. Was right, it felt good, you got to look and it was a dream and all yeah. that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, this goes out, the pictorial, you guys, it's not now once a month, it goes every 
quarter. Yeah. Every quarter, uh, and you send that worldwide. Yes. So it goes out in March. Right. It goes out in June. It goes out in September, and then December. Uh, it goes worldwide. Yeah. So worldwide. Now, uh, how how do people that are watching this that have wanted to get it and don't know how to get it? How do they get it? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way would be to go to our website, okay. which is www.racingpigeon.co.uk. Um, and it's all on there. So the, the, the weekly, as I say, around the world, you, you, can, you can subscribe to a, to a digital version of the weekly. Okay. Um, so, yeah, every week um, you'll, you'll get an email when it's available, and then you can obviously read, flick the pages, zoom in, and, and do whatever you like on Now, that. both of these here, uh, the pick tutorial for a, uh, a for four copies for a one-year yeah. uh, subscription, yeah. how much is that cost in pounds? Um, in the UK, it's the um, pictorial is £25, okay. um, but online, it's just... You just you don't pay the postage on that, so it's just a four pound ninety five per subscription. One pound. Four pound. Four pound. Four pound ninety five pence. So if you yeah. don't want the, the hardcover, yeah. per se, yeah. you can get it for four pounds. Yeah. And you get it online. You can go on your phone. Yeah. And you can click and you can um, buy any back copies, so you can read the history of all the pictorials that we have. Okay. And if there's any particular fancies that you want to read about, you could actually click and actually buy that copy as well. Really? Yeah. And how far does it go back? Right. Well, the, the pictorial goes back 50 years, but we actually have the last 15 on we, the last 15 years we have online as a digital format. So you can go back 15 uh, yeah. years uh, with yeah. pictorial, yeah. which is great. Which probably a hundred copies because, as I say, it's only been the last couple of years that we've gone to the quarterly. Before that, there was monthly. So it's a big archive, big and, archive. And question for other people that want to advertise. I see that 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 copy there is a couple of years back. It was a special on one loft races. So yep. obviously, one loft races yep. were sending in information, yep. paying for the copy. Yep. Roughly, what does it cost to put a put an ad in? Um, it's about two hundred pounds um, to put a full page full, full page. page advert, and we go down to twenty pound advert. So. so, guys, if you want a whole page, you know, in color, nice and shiny, you, you provide the artwork. A whole page like this is two hundred pounds. Yeah, uh, Canadian dollars. You're looking close to that's about three hundred. That's about the price point. It, you're fine. Yeah. And we can we can set adverts as well in that price. We we right. do that as well. And uh, okay. Now for the, the newspaper, how much is the newspaper for a weekly subscription? Right, for the weekly subscription, um, in the UK um, it's £80 and worldwide, anywhere in the world, is £168 delivered every week. That's it. So one time fee? One time fee. So I pay £160 yeah. and it comes to my door? Every week for a year. Every week for a year. Guys, I, I, I'm going to say something. For <laughs> I don't think that's really that bad of a price. No. Uh, very reasonable. It's the postage is the killer as well. That's the, that's the problem. But yeah, it's, as I say. It's and a, again, in, in here, what, what kind of information are we going to find in this um, newspaper? Well, we obviously have press um, reports come in from, from all over the world. I mean, we, we, have, we have writers from Australia. Um, we have stuff in, in here from, from America. Um, we have Maltese writers. Um, we have stuff from Holland and Belgium right. um, and Ireland. As well as the UK, so it's lots. The, the weekly's more lots of up-to-date information on on races, on one-offs, um, on on general general stuff. Sort of, you know, that's happening at the time. Right now, for let's say somebody that wants to put an advert, wants to do a whole page yes. for one episode, so a whole some, page, something or, like that. Yeah, um, like this. Which is, which is obviously. Again, that's the similar price structure to the pictorial, so that would be two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds, and then they break down into, and we could go to the front where you can see sort of a little bit of different size stuff. Yeah, this. so we, we go down, which is sort of twenty pounds, thirty five. Um, that that's right. So so, so, yeah, so we, we have different structures. And if people want to advertise in this as well or yeah. order this, what's the best way for them? Again, if they go to the website www.racingpigeon.co.uk, um, again, um, there's details on there on, on, on how to advertise, how to get on in touch with our advertising team. Um, 
and obviously uh, of just how to subscribe if, if you want to order the, the newspaper. Question we've had, uh, with your magazine worldwide, how many uh, subscribers do you have? Worldwide? Yes. Um, on the newspaper. The newspaper, we do 10,000 copies. Okay. Um, the, the bulk of which are in the UK. Okay. Um, but then we, we, we do obviously have um, a, a lot go to um, Italy, Malta, Holland, Belgium, right through to Australia. Okay. And the, and the US. All right. And then with Pictatorial? That goes to 54 countries around the world. And do you have roughly know how many subscribers? Um, yeah, uh, we do about 5,000 of the printed newspapers okay. and then we do about half of that again on an online version online so both of these you can get online both you can click and read online so guys you can you can you can go online you can see them both that's great also uh also you're a writer as well i yeah, see yeah, some books here i've written some books yeah did you want to talk about something yeah yeah can do yeah you might as well oh, excuse me okay so again um, and you sell these books? Yeah, these books are also on the on the website. Um, so I wrote this book a couple of years ago. What's the name of this? Um, this it's without limits. Is is the actual uh, range of books? And this one was on the young birds. Okay. Um, again, you've you've just seen the young birds. So this this book tells you exactly um, all about um, my system, all about sort of young bird sickness problems. Um, we we go on to racing um what i've actually done is i've actually gone through on each day what to feed the pigeons um okay. for the for the race that that's um the right the you've broken pigeons. it down on how you fly young pigeons exactly and what to look for and what your thoughts and beliefs are now yeah. guys remember there's a million ways to bake a cake so this isn't here to rip down and tear down somebody no this no. is another man's idea of how he flies pigeons and you know what i think it's good you put it in form because some people they love to have a guideline, great yeah. for, for beginners. And it's it's a great guideline because what, what it actually it does is it will, every week's different, every day is different, depending right. on the distance of the race, depending on the wind, depending on the conditions. So what I've actually done is try to make pigeon fanciers understand why they're doing something rather okay. than just doing it because you cannot do the same thing every Monday, the same thing every Tuesday. Right. Um, because obviously the pigeons have different requirements depending on, on, on the race. So right. that's how I've done it. And obviously we've, we've gone right through from weaning to... And, and the book is book. nice. It's a nice hardcover book. Yeah. I mean, you've put some time and thought about it. The yeah. pictures are nicer colored. It looks like everything's nice yeah. and easy to read. Uh, which is which is which is good. You see the color pages. You see the products that you and use. It, you see the features. Yeah, You're showing and, everything. And it's based on ten years of diaries. I kept diaries for ten okay. years racing every day. So what I've done is actually concised it into into a book. So if someone wants to purchase this book, how yeah. do they do it? Again, they can go to racingpigeon.co.uk um, and one of the categories is books. Okay. Um, and where you'll find obviously the young bird book mm -hmm. and as a as I was just saying, I've, I've written a book on my hens system. You just saw the hens. Okay. So this, this book's on, on the hens. Um, again, and it's, it's the same. It's all it's, the it's all your the journal. Information. It's, what you're, it's what you're doing. Um, and as I say, I go on about the light system and the, the ventilation of the loft. The, yeah, the, yeah, the key importance that. that you've just, just seen. That There's the loft. It's, it's, a lot of people are saying, oh, um, beautiful. How much is are these books? These books are... £22.45 UK price. Now, if someone buys it, yep. can they see it online as well? Or is it only no, in book? No, it's only in book format. So, yep. guys, there's only one way to get these, and you'll mail them worldwide. We'll mail them worldwide, yeah. Worldwide, worldwide, if you want. What else do you have for books here? Because I see you've got a few more. Yeah. I like um, to plug them where they need to be okay. plugged. <laughs> well, I've written a book on the cock system. Okay. Um, because, obviously, um, cocks feeding-wise... They just need to be fed slightly differently to the hens. Okay. Um, so we're, and it's we're the same thing. It's got all the nice fancy it's pictures. It's got, got everything in there. You got a few more, I see. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Um, now, one of the main icons that revolutionised um, the pigeon sport in the UK okay. was a gentleman of the name Jim Biss. Okay. Um, he brought in the Dordan pigeons and that into England. Okay. Um, and this this is a book all about the, his system. All about the pigeons that he brought over, um, and and as as a long distance fancier, um, 
Wow. He, he's second to none. Um, but yeah, he, 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 he was the first person to actually invest heavily in, in the pigeon, pigeon world. Okay, now, is it, you recommend this is a good read? This is a fantastic read. Um, such a, yeah, I mean, when you actually look at the, the system and that, that he was racing before his time. You know, so he was ahead of his time. He, totally he was, ahead of his he time. Was make, he was making moves before the moves were even made. Exactly. Guys, if, if you're looking for like a, a Christmas gift for your loved one, this might be just something good and small. Yeah. It's not an overly big book. No, it's a great, great little read. Okay. Um, and then the other book that I wrote was um, on tubs, which in the UK, the National Flying Club, mm -hmm. um, the, the tubs race is like the, the blue ribbon event. Okay. Um, so I wrote this book on, on the last 10 years of, of that race. And, and we know this pigeon here, we seen her yesterday, and she's yep. on the cover of your book. That pigeon was raced by McFadden, she, Queen Mary, um, she, she won. Yes. Um, but she's... Oh, I've seen her, I handled her. saw her yesterday. Super nice hand. Yep. So again, this is all about the winners of the races over okay. 10 years, plus all the section winners, because um, obviously it right. uh, depends where they're from. So they've given us a real good insight into their system and whatever. So for five, 600 mile distance racing, that is a Bible for, for the last and, 10 years of racing. And this race is a very tough race from what I hear. It's, yeah, it's, it is a gauntlet. It is literally uh, the marathon of, of racing. What makes it so tough? And um, the, the, the thing with the Tarbs race is it's, it's the race that a lot of people want to, 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 to race in. So the, the, you'll, you'll get different pigeons from middle to, to long to extreme distance pigeons all competing. And it's tough because it's, it's the one race that is the epitome. Every, everyone wants to have been, so it used to be the Paul National, it's now the Tarbs National. So, so this that's, is, this is that's the iconic. Time. That's the iconic. This is like race. your World Cup, your Stanley yeah. Cup, your NFL. And Super it's the whole of the UK. I mean, this okay. this other pigeon is called Pennine Heights, which is up to York, up to Yorkshire, which is you know nearly three hundred miles from the coast, further north. Right. And that pigeon beat all of the the, the south coast pigeons. So. So another good read. You rec I, I recommend yeah, for it's sure. Good, good yeah. yeah, really good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You're happy with it. Yeah, I'm really happy. And you, you, you've put all these together, you do the pictorial, you do the magazine, and then there's one other little yeah, the yearbook then, you do as well. well. A lot of people might have already have known this one. This is the Squirrels yearbook, which again is a, a is an annual. It comes out just before Christmas each year. Okay. Um, it's It's been going nearly 100 years. But what, what do you get in this book? Um, well, what happens in this is we get lots of articles on some of the, the main achievements and, and winners of, of some of the, the, the main um, national events over the year. So this one, for example, is on um, uh, Jim and Gary Peggy, and this is the Scottish National. Okay. So we, we get Irish, we get Welsh. Um, so there's lots of information in there on, on different winners. Um, that's a, a, a great read. Um, plus, um, on top of that, we, we put in a diary, a, uh, a management system. Yeah, so if you want to have a pedigree, so you yeah, can so keep people, in your loft, jot them down. People put all their information in here, um, all the racing stock pairs. Um, it's it's a, a pocket pocket loft book with all the different information in there and all the systems, yeah. Some advertisements, well. yeah, everything. Plenty of adverts. So a, a book like that, uh, will you ship that out worldwide as well? That goes worldwide um, and it's six pounds UK price for a book like that so that and, and that doesn't include the postage no so it's about um, I think it's about 11 worldwide for example uh, so guys, just over a ten. yeah so guys under, it's a massive yeah, under 20 dollars you get you get the yearbook you get a lot of good little reads in there you get some color you get some average you get some product yeah and it's up to date yeah exactly yeah so it's all up so, to that yeah absolutely super yes so anything else to so you've got all this, you've got the magazine, you've got the pic tutorial, and you're still working on things. Yeah, I'm just, at the moment, I've just, um, I'm actually working on a, a book on the Royal Pigeon Loft at the moment. Okay. Um, excuse the phone. That's um, okay. But yeah, <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the um, Queen of England, she, she actually owns racing pigeons, they're in Sandringham. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously she has um, loft keepers, loft pigeon fanciers that have looked after the pigeons. Um, they've been in the royal family 
-hmm. for four generations of monarchs. So we go back to Edward the Seventh, um, which was from 1882 when the, the first pigeons were actually brought to the UK um, from King Leopold of Belgium. So it was Belgian pigeons that were brought Here. To, to Sandringham in, in, in Norfolk, in England. Um, and then since then, the pigeons have been in the, the royal family, so they, they've passed hands. So they went um, from Edward VII to George V to George VI, which is the current Queen's father, um, and then the, the Queen. So what I've actually been working on is a book to commemorate, um, to coincide with the Queen, which um, this year marks 70 years that she's been on the throne, which itself is, she's the longest monarch that we've, we've had, which is, which is a... So big most... things to come, you're working on that. Who knows, we don't know when it's gonna be done and that's okay, but if you follow along, follow, yeah, it's, follow it's, because it's, you're gonna get it from, from your site. Yeah, right? it's gonna be on the site. It's gonna be called the Royal Sky, so it gives us a, an in-depth look at the, the, the pigeon keepers over the years, um, all the different pigeon lofts that there's been, plus a look at the, the the use of the royal pigeons uh, during both world wars as well. So yeah, yeah. guys, uh, I recommend getting it. I, I took a little look into some of the work that uh, Lee's been put into it. He's he's doing a great job. Again, I know the quality will be good because you see it already in the other books. So before I wrap this up, Lee, yeah, where do the people go to subscribe? Uh, where do they go? What's the best website? Yeah, well, the, the best website is www.racingpigeon.co.uk. Everything's on there. It, it's all easy to use. Um, you can order. You can have a view at some of the... Um, plus, you can get in touch with us. You all right, I want to thank you for taking the time for You're doing this. You're very welcome, Ryan. Uh, we will post, uh, we'll post all your information on our site. Yeah, that way people can go to it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Thanks for very showing welcome. the loss. And thanks for... Putting up with so many pigeon guys and articles and booklets and writing and shit because I know there's a lot of shit to do and a lot of people are on deadlines and they always come to you late and say, get this in and it's too late, it's too late, but somehow... Every you, one of them. Yeah. Every, you make it happen. I look forward to working with you and Doncaster. Yep. Uh, one quick plug, you'll yep. be doing the Doncaster show? Yeah, Doncaster show, which is the biggest show in the UK. Right. Um, that's on the 12th of November. Mm -hmm. And Doncaster's smack bang in the middle of, 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 of England. Um, so it's very easy for, for people to get to him. We have 100 plus stands plus auctioneers and, and yourself. So. so we're going to have auctions. Uh, everyone's welcome to come. What is it, £10 to get in? £10 to get in, yeah. We're, we have hotels on site, so yeah. Everything is there. Yes, for this League Pigeon Auctions will be there November the 12th for season number five at Doncaster. Lee, I'm going to say this. Keep doing what you're doing. Good job. Thank you for giving me that small lobster, guys. Try the reads out. I think you might like them. If you're into reading books, I think this is a good collection right here. Lee, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Cheers. All right, guys. You guys know what to do for this Elite Pigeon Auctions. We're here. I told you. Now, I got to get going. Why? I got to drive to Scotland. Macalonia waits. Thanks for flying with us, guys. We'll see you on the road. Bye for now.